If you've been praying for a way to handle Ray, but you're behind on the meta, your prayers have been answered. The Vader rework is here and is making shockwaves in the meta from how impactful the changes were. There are a lot of ways to build a team for Vader to counter Ray. Ray hasn't exactly been going down without a fight though, with all sorts of adaptations coming in to make sure that Vader couldn't have it his way. Well, I think I just ruined Ray on defense. There's a lot happening under the hood that led to this working as well as it does. But the simplest explanation is that Thrawn is considered a higher priority target than the rest of the team. This means that the Resistance Brothers and Rey will always go for him first. Remember when Jedi Revan came out and Treya started hard countering him once people started modding Treya for full tank? This is pretty similar. As an extra bonus, Bastila's Sith Apprentice unique doesn't require a Sith leader. Congratulations, Thrawn. You've been granted the rank of Master. Now, we need to talk about Vader. Does he need Relic 7? In most of my fights, I'd say the answer is no. In the example fight I'm showing, my Vader hit Ray for almost 800,000 damage. The tankiest Rays in the game typically ballpark around 500,000 to 600,000 combined health and protection max, and we're not even having to one-shot her from full protection. So what does this mean? A few things. Vader's kit comes with a few modding challenges. His crit chance is incredibly low, with a starting physical crit chance of 44% at Relic Level 3. Believe it or not, this is actually where adding more Relic Levels will end up helping you the most. The Merciless buff does grant us an extra 25%, but this means that even at Relic 7, we ideally want 50% extra crit chance from mods to hit that 100% chance to crit. Just aim for your modding to land at 75% crit chance, or as close as you can possibly get. The bad news doesn't stop there. You'll notice that Vader's base potency really isn't all that impressive at a small 50%. In contrast, Ray's base tenacity starts at 100%. This means that if we want to minimize RNG as much as possible, we've got some work to do. Push your potency as close to 100% as you can using a potency cross and potentially a set. Although going above 100% isn't the worst idea either. To add another layer, speed is a very real concern if we want to stay in control for max banners. Now, we're not talking 300 speed Vader or anything, but you ideally want to land about 250 to 270 speed, with this number being pretty variable depending on your level of competition. And to finish it all off, we want to try to juggle all of these things while sneaking in damage modding where we can. If your relic levels are lower, then the damage becomes more important, but everyone's mods are different, and you might have to trial and error what works for your mod collection. This is definitely one of the more tedious modding projects I've had to take on lately, but I think you'll agree that the end results are worth it. There are a couple of other important modding details we need to get right. Watt and Basila need to be faster than Vader, including his unique. This counter doesn't need to worry about outspeeding the resistance heroes, meaning we potentially have a lot more room in our modding to focus on other stats. Thrawn and your Dispel character should be as fast as you can comfortably make them without stealing mods from your other high-end counter teams. Thrawn gets lots of bonus turn meter here, but we still need to make sure he'll go a second time before Rey so he can fracture her. For Zetas, Vader's special is mandatory. We aren't using his lead and his unique is optional for this specific setup, although they're still useful. What unique Zeta is also mandatory. Bastila unique Zeta is technically skippable, but if you run up against some tenacity modding, you'll wish you had it. The play-by-play -play for this counter is actually pretty simple. Give the tank tech to Thrawn, then Poe forces Thrawn to go. If the enemy has a pre-taunt, swap to whatever dispel character you chose to bring. Otherwise, swapping to Bastila and aiming debuff soup at Finn is fine. Depending on your speed, Thrawn might go now. Whenever his turn comes, fracture Ray. Watt's next turn needs to give the weapon tech to Vader, and Bastila should create her debuffs. With Vader, aim at Ray, activate Merciless Massacre, 
and then use AoE. From here, Malik will be chock full of debuffs, and you can one-shot him with Culling Strike. Hit three basics on the remaining targets, then take a look at the board. If Finn is hovering around four or five debuffs, target Finn for Force Choke. If he has more, aim at Ray. Vader should hit full two meter again and kill Finn with Culling Strike. From here, the battle is won. Enter the second Merciless Massacre and remove Ray. So that's it. I know it sounds cheesy, but this might be one of my favorite counters I've discovered to date. The process of discovering this was an amazing feeling and I really love how this counter doesn't fight to control the board immediately and instead lets the AI do what it wants to do and twists it in your favor. It all feels very strategic. I love it. Thanks for watching. I hope this is exciting for you as it is for me. Ray with Malak was normally a pain point that made Vader's life a lot more complicated. I wasn't expecting the end result to be a counter that feels tailor-made to punish this team. Buckle up, send this to your TW officers, and get practicing.